Well, hello there, my dear children of the apocalypse. How are we doing today? Yes, it's time for part three of our video installment series called Shit You're Not... Sh shit You're Not Allowed to Say... Hold on. Shit You're Not Allowed to Say on a Video Publicly... No, Shit You're Not Allowed to Say on the Internet a Video Publicly... Pu I don't know what it's called. Dude, look, I I'm tired. I've not had the particularly largest amount of sleep. And I'm in a bit of a jiffy, so this video is pretty much being just uh, yeeted out there. Essentially, I'm leaving tomorrow morning to go to Vienna until Sunday for a Rammstein concert I'm extremely excited about. And, uh, yeah, Wolfner actually decided to do a couple of things that I just decided I have to talk about. Oh, I bet everybody in chat right now is just like, Oh, he's gonna roast them! He's gonna roast them! Yay! Um, actually, actually, Gaijin did something yesterday I am very, very proud of. What they've done is, you wouldn't believe this, only me can get this excited about it. They gave a shout out to a streamer. That's right. Their Twitter, and I think their Facebook as well, gave a shout out to Oddbores. Oddbores is um, one of my teammates on the, the YouTube Cup. And, dude, it's great to see people actually get promoted. Unlike in the YouTube Cup where we won and our shout out looked like this. That's a, this is what I get for winning the YouTube Cup. A shout out that looks like a a link, which is actually my name, which means you have to click on it, and then a random video. Oh, you know, I thought it would stop there, and I thought, yeah, Gaijin, this is good, but this is not enough for me to make. I can't just make a video because Gaijin gave a streamer a shout out. No, 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 no. They did something more. They introduced map rotation. But of course, this wouldn't be our great company comrade Snail if it wasn't for a tiny disclaimer at the very bottom of the page. Of course, the bottom, not the top, because we wouldn't want you to get to the bat stuff in the beginning of the post. We want you to get to the bat stuff at the end of the post. We're limiting the exclude feature only for premium owners! Woo! No free to play for you! <laughs> now, to be completely fair, I don't really mind this being locked behind a paywall. And that's because they could lock this behind a, a $25 flamingo tag, and I wouldn't care, because it's it's showing me that someone somewhere, Art Gaijin, is listening and is actually trying to do something positive. That, that is kudos from me. Now, let's not forget about the mouse. Because whilst this post was very nice, and whilst shouting out streamers is very nice, I'm waiting for a different post. I'm waiting for a post titled, Oopsie Boopsie, we did a doopsie. I want Gaijin to apologize to the community for even thinking about removing the mouse. I want them to keep the mouse, keep the Kuilin, keep the Kugel Blilian, keep the Tiger 105, the lot. How about we also, oh, I don't know, make a decompression patch? That wouldn't take long. I mean, if you fix one battle rating for every premium tank you add, you'd probably have the game fixed three times over. Yee. Now, at this point, we're three minutes into the video, and I think most of you have probably figured out that we're not playing realistic battles. No. What we're playing, guys, is... This is the developer game mode. <laughs> this is the developer game mode. Woo! I want you to show how cast works here. Because... Unlike in RB, close air support in arcade fires each rocket individually. And you might think this is a great thing. It's I can't use it. It's horrible because you have to actually know which rocket's fired. And because it's relatively challenging to do close air support and you don't get to choose what plane you're going to spawn in, usually you just do that. You just ram your plane straight into the ground, suiciding. It's the easiest way to get kills since you have a limit on how many second you can fly when spawning a plane in, it relatively is the only good option that you have. Is it smart? Hell no. Is it efficient? Hell no. Is it fun? Hell yeah! I mean, Arcade has been... Well, it's been a fun break from things, but also it's been able to bring me into a mindset of the developer, because most people that play this game that work for Gaijin unfortunately play Arcade. And... I think Arcade gets a bad rap. I know I give Arcade a bad rap. I mean, I'm one of those people who, in the past, has always sort of bashed people for playing Arcade. You know, because Arcade's the, it's the noob game mode, it's the peasant game mode. Now, the reason why my view was always so negative towards this game mode is because, for me, it represents dead content. You know, one thing is to play a game, another thing is to actually make content from the game. And there's a reason why Arcade hasn't been on YouTube in its prime since Krebs Coho. Um, 
you know, nobody makes streams or arcade and, and gets 100 viewers. So there's a discrepancy between what you play and what you want to watch. And this brings me back to an old circle of thought that I had two years ago, which was to do with people asking for more game modes because people want a diversity. And the game modes that we were receiving were game modes that nobody was making content from. So for me, squadron battles are useless because I'm not in a squadron per se, but even if I was, I wouldn't want to make content from it. I made one video on squadron battles ever, and it was not that well received. It was not that fun to watch, and I completely understand why. Um, simulator battles are a great example where the game mode has sort of been just disappearing and disappearing because one of the issues with War Thunder is they keep adding stuff. They will add more game modes as we progress, but they haven't revised the old ones. Essentially, all the game modes that sort of started the game, Air Arcade, Air RB, or as it used to be called, Air Historical Battles and, and Full Real Battles, or now called Sim, these game modes have not changed. There's been no changes whatsoever. We, I don't even think we had a new map added in, in Air Realistic Battles for, like, 10 patches. So, take a look at World War Mode. World War Mode was a game that I thought this could be a game changer if it's done correctly. I had huge doubts about it because I'm not a fan of, of strategy. I don't play strategy games, but I know there's a huge market out there for it. And if World War Mode was done in a way that could attract players who are regulars in the genre of strategy games, those people could flock in there and they would suddenly have a game mode that's essentially built just for them. Me, for example, I've been asking for a game mode for duels because I like going to 1v1 tournament duels, but there's a lot of waiting and there's a lot of uh, you know challenging people you'll meet and there's always this progression and you have to wait for the tournament to start. You have to play on the specific day the tournament, the specific hour. It's not just like, you know, oh, I want a duel right now. If I want a duel right now, I have to DM someone. I have to be like, yo, are you online? Are you home? Are you at work? Are you in school? Can you duel me right now? I feel like dueling. And a game mode like that would still be a game mode played for fun. There wouldn't be really any reward put into it. But with War Thunder, War Thunder is a game of grinding. And so if you want to grind, you have to choose what game mode you're going to play, which isn't necessarily fun. It's just that which game mode you're going to play that's necessarily efficient. At the end of the day, there's so many game modes in this game, and, and, and everything's so grind-related that the only reason I would want to go and play a game mode, I've never played it you know, ever in my life, is either if there was a massive bonus, or if I played a match in a vehicle that's stock, and it would just come out spa There would have to be some really large incentive for me to do that. All right, now I'm going to pause the video right here. We're going to talk about the Band-Aid effect. And this is the problem with Gaijin. The problem is that they add so much stuff to the game that when they finally get around to fixing a problem, they don't really fix it. Because fixing a problem in one game mode may not fix it in all game modes, because not all game modes work the same. And seeing the developers only play certain games and seeing that complaints sometimes only come from certain community members, as an example, the J-Out mechanic. The J-Out mechanic was complained by, usually, air realistic battles, right? Because that's where most people tend to bail out on you. Arcade is too hectic, it has too much instant spawning for this to be a problem, right? Not quite. You see, in Arcade, the air spawn system works way different than in RB. In RB, you have to get enough points to then be able to spawn in any vehicle that you have researched and put into a lineup. So, really, you can choose anything. But it's not just that you get to choose what plane, you get to choose what armament, you get to choose what convergence, you get to use whichever shells you want, you get to use whichever bomb delay. None of that in Arcade. All of it is random. Which means when you're spawning in, obviously you only need one kill for a fighter, two kills for an attacker, three kills for a bomber, but you don't get to choose what you spawn in. For all you know, you could get the shittiest bomber, you could get the shittiest fighter, you could get the rockets which are not very good, or the rockets which are very good. You can get a bomb delay that's two seconds, or fifteen. These inconsistencies is why arcade is fun, because it's sort of, like, what I like is I could go into a game, I could spawn in a saber, and a MiG-17, and an Arado, and a 262C2B, all within the spam of the same game, and I could have none of those vehicles researched, or even close to researched. So I understand the appeal, and I think it's fantastic for a player to be able to experience what a plane feels like outside of the test drive, but 
when you have one minute, yes, you only have one minute to do the, as much damage as you possibly can, and you had to grind three kills to, to get that spawn in, and you had to spam click the button because everybody's spam clicking to spawn in. And if you're not the first to click the button, you're not the first to spawn in. And there can only be one bomber that spawns in per one team. So this is one of the issues. You can't have two bombers at the same time. You can only have one bomber that's then being defended by a fighter and an attacker. It's it's weird. It needs an overview, overwork. But the main problem is that then players do tend to just spawn in an attacker or a bomber and just ram the ground because it's the easiest thing to do. It's not like they're going to live to do two passes. So what happens in this clip is the Lincoln spawned in. He's in a slow, he's not in a very good bomber. He's been surrounded by three fighters. I have two other guys who are attacking this dude, so obviously he just bails out. And now I have no targets to shoot at, so I bail out myself. Can you notice what just happened? I'll play back again in slow motion, see if you can notice. So obviously when I bailed out, my kill, or rather my death, was attributed to the closest person on the ground. Now, the closest target on the ground, which has to be, I believe it's within a five kilometer radius, it happened to have been a Tiger One who just spawned in. So, me being, you know, me bailing out of a plane is accredited to a tank that's sitting on the ground that at no point in this match probably even put a single shot into me. But the real problem is that the Lincoln was not accredited as a kill to anyone. And the reason why that happened isn't because he was not close enough to us as fighters. All three fighters were about equally close to him. It's because in arcade, the game seems to recognize that it has to be the tank that has to be closest. So it's not about what plane was closest, it's about what tank was closest. And because this was happening over enemy territory, and I, I assume there was no tank, friendly tank, that was within that distance, that just nobody got the kill. Now, I personally respect Gaijin for actually having done something about this, or at least attempting to do something. It, it's not a flawless solution, it, it's... Something was done. I think the issue here is that we're overlooking the baseline structure of the problem. Because a game developer is adapt for fixing game-born problems. The problem of J-ing out, I believe, is a player-born problem. And usually when the players are involved, when players are the ones that cause something to happen in the game, the, the approach has to be different. Now, Gaijin's approach in the past for fixing this issue was to create the crew lock system. And the crew lock system works fantastically in fucking everybody over. The crew lock system is the equivalent of you sitting in, in primary school and then one kid does something dumb which causes the entire class to be punished. That's the feeling that I get with crew lock. Everybody's punished, nobody gets to have fun, when really it is just the, the select few individuals who are causing this issue. So in my opinion, the solution for player-born problems is to target those players themselves. We, we had an infamous case of a dude called Helmet Potato years ago. He used to fly his IL-28 and just climb up to space. The solution isn't to give a crew lock to people who bail out. It's to straight up ban them. It's to prevent that type of behavior from happening. Because by banning them, you're showing them that there is absolutely zero tolerance in you creating actions like that, in you wasting other people's time, in you being a detriment to the way the game works. So when it comes to the actual crew lock mechanic, I think nobody disagrees with me here when I say this thing should be removed from the game pronto, just nuked, never to be returned again. With that, there needs to be something done to the way the reward system works. Perhaps punishing players, banning them when they're doing dick things in the game, isn't the ultimate solution. One of the recent changes Gaijin did, albeit not that recent, was to make it so that the longer you stay in a match, the more experience you get, at least in realistic battles. That's something that players wanted. I don't like that mechanic, because saying that the longer you stay in a match is promoting the type of gameplay that tends to lead to camping, that tends to lead to people sitting in the back of the map deciding not to do anything, and the matches drag on and on and on. I think what really should be being promoted is players holding the objectives, players doing as much as they can in, in a short span of time. Whenever you get those, you know, rapid three or four kills, one after another, that should be something worth a hell of a lot more than just your standard sit in the back of a map with an object 120 and shoot across the map and getting, you know, harmless down tier kills. 
I believe the game should work a lot like this video worked, where I will give kudos where kudos are due. If Gaijin makes good decisions, if they make positive development choices, and they introduce good mechanics, I will more than gladly promote them, I'll more than gladly say nice things about them, but whenever they do something that is bad, then I will speak of it. And the same should work in the game. The game should strive to create positive player base, to create a challenging environment that's also rewarding, because a player that is rewarded for having played well is going to be a happy player, motivated to not just play again, but to play and do well again. Whereas a player who's being punished because he's in the bad team, because he is in a disadvantage, because he is up to it, punishing that player even further and giving him a grind that he has to, to sort of stoop over only with new premiums and only by paying money is only going to make a bitter, sour, cunt of a player and that dude is then eventually going to make your playtime less worthy and then you're going to go and make somebody else's playtime less worthy and then we're all just one big toxic cloud and i don't want that to happen and to end this video one final shout out and i'm showing you here a dm from one of the gaijin's pr department guys so public relations working on trying to get the game fixed this is screaming you know high intense work these guys are going out of their way to do something positive. So I want nothing but love for the Warthner PR guys. Um, with that said, I'm going to take use of this. So I would like to ask you guys to reach out to me on Discord. Whether it's a, a bug report you have already submitted, whether it's a bug report you're thinking about submitting, send me a friend invite on Discord. I'll add you as a friend. You can then DM me. Whatever it is, reach out to me, and I'll try to get as many of these um, issues sort of built in a hierarchy and then sent, you know, in, in the correct order to the PR guys, have them prioritize it, and hopefully we can get some of those primary bugs, primary issues, uh, a little bit sped up, prioritized, and get fixed as soon as possible. That's it for me. I'm off to Vienna. Auf Wiedersehen und bis zum nächsten Mal. Ja, kann ich auch Deutsch sprechen. Und davor habe ich gesagt, Dieses Spiel sind kaputten Scheiß. Fucking nightmare, dude. I have to click twice. That's what I've started doing. I was talking to Classified about this yesterday. Like, now, now when I play War Thunder, I, I double click my mouse button because I know sometimes my gun won't shoot on the first click. That's how bad it's gotten. Again. Ghost Shell. Cool. My favourite. Go shell, cool. I don't know what the fuck that is. Cool. I'm, I'm fucking done, dude. I'm, I'm honestly done. Two ghost shells in a fucking row. Like, what, what do I do? Honestly, dude, what the fuck do we do? Like, how much emails do I need to send to snail? How many fucking times have I got to send in my sea logs?